Nineveh, and one of my most favorite books from when I was growing up was The Little House by Virginia Lee Burton. Now this book is an oldie. Uh, it was published in 1942, but it is one of the best of all time, in my opinion. Now through this book we follow, of course, The Little House. Now this little house starts in uh, the middle of the country and this family that lives in it cherishes this house and then it goes on through the generations where this house is still standing and how um, it is stable where it is uh, and the world kind of changes around it. It goes through the seasons, it goes through the production of roads, um, the city being built up around it and everything that goes on around this little house and the one thing that I love most about this book growing up is that every time I read it, I thought about um, the things in my life that I cherished and that I wanted to pass down to um, my family that comes after me, and it made me look at all the wonderful things that my family had passed down to me, um, whether it be a small trinket or something like a house. Um, and so it was just a really beautiful book, and I hope you get to read it. It is called The Little House by Virginia Lee Burton. Hello everyone, uh, this is Miss Lindsay and today I'm going to tell you about one of my favorite childhood books. This is Martha Blah Blah. Now Martha Blah Blah is an installment of the Martha Speak series um, about Martha who is a talking dog. So basically, Martha loves to eat alphabet soup. She eats it for breakfast, she eats it for lunch, she eats it for dinner, but instead of going down into her stomach, all those letters, they go up to in her brain so she can talk, which is amazing. She's been able to talk about things she's never been able to say before, like, I would like 10 burgers, or please let me outside, um, and it's amazing. But one day, Martha tries to speak, but instead of saying, make my mistake, it comes out as blah, 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 blah. <gasps> oh my goodness, to Martha's horror, she has lost her words. So, read this book and join Martha on her hilarious adventure on how to get her words back. Has anyone ever told you not to stand on a rolling chair? Well, if they haven't, you should read this book, Officer Buckle and Gloria by Peggy Rathman. If Officer Buckle knows one thing, it is safety. He loves going to schools and telling kids all about safety and how to protect themselves. However, the kids don't really like to listen to him. They kind of fall asleep a lot. But one day, the police department gets a new police dog, and Officer Buckle decides to take Gloria with him when he goes to talk to the children. I don't want to spoil the book for you, but what I can tell you is Gloria is a really, really funny dog, and someone may or may not slip and fall while standing on a rolling chair. This was one of my absolute favorite books as a kid. The illustrations are great. It won a Caldecott Award, and so I definitely think you should read it. Hi guys, this is Miss Kelsey, and I'm here to tell you about my all-time childhood favorite books. This one is Miss Nelson is Missing, and it's by Harry Allard. And this one is The Monster at the End of This Book, and it's by John Stone. These were great reads for me when I was a kid. Miss Nelson is Missing is about a very sweet teacher who had a very um, worst misbehaved class on the planet. They were doing everything in her class, throwing spitballs, not listening during story time, just all kinds of things. And one day, Miss Nelson went missing and a very mean teacher came into the classroom. So try to read this book, check it out if you can. The other one is The Monster at the end of this book. And this is my favorite person, Grover. Grover does not want any reader to get to the end of this book. Why? Because there is a monster at the end of the book. Guys, you gotta check these books out. They are great reads. Come stop by the Hoover Library. and this is one of my favorite books when I was little. This is The True Confessions of Charlotte Dole by Ivy, and if you like Pirates, High Season Adventure, this book is for you. This book is about 13-year-old Charlotte Dole who is excited to return home from her school in England to her family in Rhode Island in the summer of 1832. But when the two families she was supposed to travel with mysteriously, mysteriously canceled their trip, Charlotte finds herself the lone passenger on a long sea voyage with a cool captain and a rebellious crew. Worse yet, soon after step, stepping aboard, she becomes entangled in a conflict between them. What begins as an eagerly anticipated ocean crossing turns into a harrowing journey where Charlotte gains a, a villainous enemy and is put to trial for murder. This is The True Confessions of Charlotte Dole by Avi. 
Hi everybody, Miss Polly here. I've got a question for you. Do you know what books your grandparents liked to read when they were kids? How about your great grandparents? Maybe you should ask them. And if you do, they might tell you that they read The Hardy Boys or Nancy Drew, or they might mention Freddy the Pig by Walter R. Brooks. Now there's a whole series of Freddy the Pig books, but I want to tell you about one of them, Freddy the Detective. Now as I said, Freddy is a pig, and like a lot of pigs, he overeats, and he oversleeps, and he's a little bit lazy, but he also likes to daydream, and write poetry, and read a lot of books. Well, that's how he got the idea of becoming a detective. He read some books about Sherlock Holmes, and he decided he wanted to own, uh, open his own detective office right there on Mr. Bean's farm. Now, it was a great place to be a detective because there were so many animals there, like uh, Emma and Alice the ducks, and Jinx the cat, and Simon the rat, and Mrs. Winnick the rabbit, just to name a few. So with all those animals, there were lots of cases. The first case that Freddie had to solve was the disappearance of the train set that belonged to Mr. Bean's children. Well, he figured that one out. And then there were some other ones along the way. But the biggest case came up when the sheriff came to him and said, there have been a lot of robberies in the neighborhood and we can't figure it out. We've even gotten this big detective from New York City to come in and he hasn't been able to tell us what's going on. Can you help us? And so Freddie got on the case. Well, like a lot of good detective stories, there's a big trial and a courtroom scene at the end of the book. And of course they have it in the barn. And Freddie the pig and Ferdinand the crow are the opposing attorneys and Charles the rooster is the judge. Well, I bet you're wondering how it all turns out. I can't tell you you're gonna have to read the book. But if you like Freddy the Detective as much as I did, you'll probably wanna read more. We've got four Freddy the Pig books here at the Hoover Library, and we've got two more Freddy books on CD. And if you read all those and you like them, there's more in other Jefferson County libraries, and we can order them for you. But the coolest thing is, there is a Freddy the Pig fan club, Friends of Freddy. And it's so cool, it's like got 300 members from the United States and Canada and the UK. It's for kids and adults. I think we should join, don't you? Hi, my name is Miss Tracy and today I want to tell you about one of my favorite books of childhood. It's called The Phantom Toll Booth by Norton Jester. Now, I can't tell you how many times I've read this book over the years, but I can tell you that every time I read it, I love it just as much as the time before. Now, this is the story of a little boy named Milo, who thinks that everything is a waste of his time. When he's at school, he feels like learning is a waste. And when he's at home, nothing interests him, not the hundreds of toys and books and puzzles and games that he has. But one afternoon, everything changes. When he comes home from school, he sees a mysterious box. Now, it's not Christmas and it's not his birthday, but he knows the box is for him because the card attached says to Milo, who has plenty of time. When Milo opens the box, he finds a strange gift. It's a toll booth, complete with a map and two tokens. Now, Milo, who isn't interested in most anything, decides that he's gonna take a chance on the toll booth. So he hops inside his toy car and he chooses a destination on the map and he drives right past the toll booth into the land of wisdom. Now the land of wisdom sounds like a, a pretty good place, but when he gets there he realizes that things aren't going so well there. You see, the two kings that rule the land of wisdom are in a great big argument. Um, the two big cities in wisdom are Dictionopolis ruled by King Azaz the Unabridged, and Digitopolis, who was ruled by the Math Magician. Now, these two guys are brothers, and they got along fine for many years, 
but one day they had a fight about what was more important, words or numbers. King Azaz says that words are much more important than numbers, but the math magician says the opposite, that numbers, of course, are much, much, much more important than words. And so the two brothers went to see rhyme and reason so that they could find out which one was truly most important. Now rhyme and reason are sisters, and after much thought, they came back with this conclusion, that words and numbers are equally important. But the two kings didn't want to hear that. So guess what? They banished rhyme and reason. They banished them from the land of wisdom, and they put them in a castle in the air. And ever since rhyme and reason have been gone, things have not been going so great. Because after all, what is wisdom without reason, right? Well, Milo decides that he wants to help out and that he wants to free the two princesses, rhyme and reason. And he meets a really faithful dog named Tok, who's a watchdog and literally has a clock in the middle of his body. He also has another companion called the Humbug, who is a very well-dressed bug who is occasionally grumpy and loves to be the center of attention. And uh, also, he's afraid of most everything. So the three set out to rescue Rhyme and Reason. They have to go through the um, forest of sight and the valley of sound, and they even end up on the island of conclusion. Do you know how they got there? They jumped, of course. And while it's easy to jump to conclusion, it was much harder to get off. When they finally swam across the sea of knowledge and freed themselves, they still had the mountains of ignorance to go through, where many terrifying demons live. Um, there is the demons of compromise, there's gross exaggeration, there's threadbare excuse, there is the horrible hindsight, and Milo and his friends are going to have to defeat them all if they're going to free Rhyme and Reason. Is Milo successful? Does he bring Rhyme and Reason back to the land of wisdom? Well, if you want to find out, you need to read the Phantom Tollbooth by Norton Jester. Hey everyone, it's Miss Lindsay again, and this time I'm gonna tell you about one of my favorite chapter books. Now, <clears throat> this is in our YA section, but I would definitely recommend, recommend this series for ages um, 12 and up. So this is First Test by Tamora Pierce, and it is book one in the Protector of the Small series. Um, and First Test follows um, Caladry of Mendelin, um, and she is a lady in this like fantastical mythical world called Tortal. And it's been 10 years since it was decreed by the king um, that girls will be allowed to train um, as pages and then squires um, all the way up to knighthood. And no one has taken them up on it until um, Kel. So Kel is 12 years old uh, and she decides that she wants to be a knight. And so she starts as a page at the castle. But a lot of people don't really want her to become a knight because she's a girl. And so she ends up having to go through a probationary year. Um, so this is the story of Kel's probationary year. Um, so she makes friends, she faces down bullies, um, she defeats some enemies, and it is really an awesome and fun, like, girl power fantasy that I love. My mom gave me this series for Christmas um, when I was in middle school. Um, she gave me the whole box set, and I still have my copies to this day. I love this series so much. Kel is um, brave and kind, um, and these books are really, um, they're a little older, but I think that they're really ahead of their time. So um, grab First Test and enjoy, um, and then you'll definitely want to pick up the rest of the Protector of the Small series.